The future book makes its way to the Saratoga of the South. We take a look back at the Rebel Stakes, $1 million from Oaklawn Park, up next on the future book. The future book kicks off this week, Hallandale, Florida, the championship meet, an allowance race on Thursday. And why all the fuss? It was the Godolphin homebred, trained by Brandon Walsh, prevalence, making his second lifetime start after winning a maiden special weight by eight lengths. Now he was scheduled to run an allowance race a couple of weeks ago, or possibility of going to the Fountain of Youth, but he spiked a fever and they just uh, missed a workout and they decided not to run on either of those two races. So a very small hiccup, but a timely hiccup that they had to miss one of those two prep races. So he came back here, small field, they got the race to go and Prevalence picked up an 86 buyer speed figure. A nice uh, solid effort in his second lifetime start. He was clearly in hand in this race. Uh, where he goes from here, remember that third lifetime start, a lot of times horses can be improved by five to 10 speed points. And that would put him right there in the mix with many of these horses. Early looks, possibility of the bluegrass, maybe the Wood Memorial and Arkansas Derby. That's a grade one, the Wood Memorial a grade two. I think it's gonna all depend on how essential quality uh, if he continues to train well towards the bluegrass, they won't double up in that race. So most likely, I think the easiest spot would be the wood. Uh, risk takings in the upper 80s. Uh, Wayburn had a 95 in the Gotham, but that was just a flat mile. And always a chance he could maybe bounce off that effort because that was his first race in a while. So Prevalence, the son of Medaglia Dioro, uh, picked up win number two on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Hopefully we see him in the Wood Memorial and then at that point they can evaluate and see what they have with uh, all three of the Godolphins horses, Proxy, Essential Quality, and Prevalence, right here on the Future Book. The Saratoga of the South, the Rebel Yell, Saturday at Oaklawn Park, $1 million purse. It was Cadu River who was bet down to six to five favoritism. He alternated between even money and six to five most of the betting. Meanwhile, Concert Tour was nine to five most of the betting, went off at eight to five. Bob Baffert versus Brad Cox, and this one was all an advantage to Concert Tour in this race as out of the gate, a lot of people expected Cadu River to take the lead from that inside post position as he had dominated the Southwest Stakes last time. Now, some people questioned who he beat in that race and maybe uh, with the slower track, he wasn't as fast. Meanwhile, some people were questioning Concert Tour who had barely beat uh, a horse of Bob Baffert, that freedom fighter who had went out to the Gotham and did not do well there. So kind of conflicting opinions. Keep me in mind off the bench, but Joel Rosario, the truth, went to the lead from that seventh post position, cleared over in front of Cadu River, and twice you could see, looked like Florent Giroux was going to maybe try to attack on the backstretch concert tour, but he elected to lay off, and Cadu River was fighting the jockey most of the race down the backstretch, but it was kind of over in those first 11 seconds. It took about 11 seconds for concert tour to get in front of Cadu River, and at that point, the race seemed to be over. What was interesting was Concert Tour on the stretch out really was never in any serious pressure here. He was able to kind of just gallop on that lead. Ears were pricked forward and he had opened up on the turn. Caddo River was in second place coming into the stretch and he faded badly off this, kind of lugged out a little bit, interfered with Big Lake and that allowed Hozier to take the inside trip and get second. Bob Baffert running one, two in this prep race and Cadu River faded all the way back to fifth. Big Lake was kind of an unlucky third. He might have gotten second if the troubled trip of Cadu River wouldn't bumped him over. And Keep Me In Mind was never really a no-show. He was back early, made a little bit of a mid-race move, and then just kind of flattened out. I do think that race probably tightened him up a little bit, as he will probably come back a little bit more fresh in the next outing, uh, which is probably gonna be the Arkansas Derby. Now the top two from the Rebel, it looks like they may come back for the Arkansas Derby, definitely most likely concert tour. 
but I wouldn't be surprised if Hosier, who actually, you know, he lost his debut race to Concert Tour, then broke his maiden, and then he ran into Concert Tour again. So Hosier starting to develop nicely, the son of Pioneer of the Nile. Really, this race was all about Concert Tour. He is now down to the second favorite in the futures betting for the Kentucky Derby behind Life is Good. And those final round of preps are now starting to take place. This coming Saturday at the fairgrounds, the Swamp, we're going to have the Louisiana Fairgrounds Oaks. And we're going to get a couple of horses shipping in from Florida from that one, Obligatory and also Zazeel for Todd Pletcher. They're going to take on the top two from the Rachel Alexandra in Travel Column and Clarier. Meanwhile, an eight-horse field for the Louisiana Derby, led by the top three from the LeCompte Stakes and the Risen Star in Proxy, Mandaloon, and Midnight Bourbon. And we're also going to see Hot Rod Charlie ship in from Santa Anita the last time. So that should be a good interdivision rival. Two big winners to talk about Friday. Missy P, a nice winner for Mandela, opened up as the big odds on favorite, drew away. That was a five and a half furlong race. I don't think they're going to really try the Rokes. Uh, going from a five and a half furlong race to another distance race to the Oaks in about 40 days might be a little bit too much. But she, and she's also not Oaks nominated, at least early. Uh, so Missy P, a nice maiden winner out west. And then you had Triple Tap, the half-brother to American Pharaoh. He won under wraps on Saturday. Nice low head stride. And it'll be interesting to see where they go again. I think with Bob Baffert having concert tour and life is good, I don't think they're going to be that hard pressed to try to put him into one of these final preps. So an interesting rundown. Most of the horses hit their works over the weekend. Soup and Sandwich, it looks like he's going to go to the Florida Derby, collaborate, worked out uh, for the Florida Derby, a uh, nice good final quarter and under 24 on that workout. And uh, the other contenders, risk taking, gonna point to the wood. And then of course we've got the bluegrass, the UAE Derby, and also the wood memorial. Looks like prevalence after that win we talked about him is gonna go to the wood. And uh, we're really starting to shape up these final round of preps. Remember a horse from Europe may take a spot in the gate and you may get that winner on the synthetic uh, at Turfway Park. Uh, so really, you're going to have 16, 17 of the top contenders. That's where you're going to want to end up being, as I have a feeling after last year, we're going to have a full gate. Everybody's going to have a uh, derby favor and want to get out of the house and get to Churchill Downs for the big party. And they're looking at maybe 50, 60,000 fans for the Kentucky Derby right now. And a big day for the Kentucky Oaks as well. The Oaks continue to work out. Vquist no work since that last race. Search results uh, pointing to the Gazelle. Life is good, no workout, but he was on the track last week. There was a picture of him on the track at Santa Anita. And uh, again, it looks like maybe even past the Champagne, looks like he's going to go for the Gulfstream Park Oaks. And uh, simply ravishing off the bench for Ken McPeak, we'll probably see her in the Gulfstream Park Oaks or the Ashland Stakes she is nominated to as well. That's your rundown for this week. We're going to have a preview of the Louisiana Oaks and the... Uh, Louisiana Derby coming up. Watch out for that as we start to get closer to the Kentucky Derby. Remember, as D. Wayne Lucas always says, people have opinions, horses have the facts.